Hey guys, Philosopher here, and today we're going to talk all about blitz tapes. That's right. I will tell you, I am somebody who has really tried to get better at blitz, and here is my score from the first Colleen Wing Blitz, and this was my highest score ever, fifth overall. Uh, and really, the the there was the main reason for that. I was doing something different than I had done in prior blitzes. I I followed the advice of the blitz masters. If you are somebody who's been watching this YouTube stream for a while, you know that the blitz masters give really good advice on how to maximize the score for your roster. They did an amazing job uh, giving me advice. Uh, I followed their advice. It radically improved my score. I was somebody who eh, sometimes would hit the towards the bottom of of the of the top 100, but I'd really have to try hard, use a lot of charges for that. This time I just did the 25s and, you know, got fifth. Uh, obviously, I was using more charges than most. I had a lot stored up. But, you know, I will just say that, you know, obviously TCP has something to do with how you do with blitzing. But maximizing your roster, getting the most out of it is really, really important. And these guys have mastered it. They are in the top 100, usually the top 20, top 50, every single new character Blitz. And now that Blitzes are returning for Colleen and Misty, it's time to get focused back on our Blitz teams with the new meta Blitz teams are changing and Stuck and Cell are back to show us their Blitz teams to walk through the choices they made to maximize their roster and also to critique mine. So thank you guys for coming back. Really appreciate having you here. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, absolutely. So guys, let me I'm going to start with my Blitz teams because I know they're I know they're worse than yours. You guys put way more thought into what you do with them. So, but I'm going to walk through them just because people ask me all the time for my blitz teams. I am not a blitz master. I don't pretend to be, um, uh, but I, I have tried to follow your advice. So I, I kept my synergy teams together like black order and symbiotes, but with X factor, I put Namor with them because you said that teams like X factor could carry any bad member, uh, as the fifth, and I figured Namor is pretty bad outside of war. What do you guys think of that choice? That sounds perfectly reasonable. Okay. Yeah, I figured I had him built up already. And really, for you, it doesn't matter who that character is, but you know that character we all built too high and we kind of regret it now, or maybe that character had its day in the sun, but not anymore, you know, that massive uh, rocket or whatever. You can kind of throw him in a team like this. Um, and then, you know, for now for Heroes for Hire, I put in Shuri just, I didn't, I, I felt like this team wasn't quite as overpowering outside of war. And I wanted to have a character that was essentially high power. I worry sometimes when I have Shuri as the biggest character on a team, she's a healer. So the team doesn't perform as well in Blitz. So I threw her on this team. What do you guys think of that choice? I don't actually have much experience with, uh, years for higher team and blitz yet but uh it seems like if you're not running wakanda it would be a fine addition you, you know i gotta say i had run wakanda in the past in blitz but as you know the blitz teams are generated off of the you know the power level of your characters and i have a big shuri and the rest of my Wakandans are not nearly as big. And so I was having trouble because I would get matched up against a team that would have like a big Taskmaster or something, you know, whatever, big Phoenix, and I would get get rolled. So this way I just kind of split up the Wakandans and use them in different teams. That's what I've been doing. That, that's reasonable. Yeah, uh, Shuri's a good addition to that team too because she's going to pass out healing energy and defense up. And Wing is... It's really just the damage for that team. So she'll clean up. Yeah, that was my thought. You know, she, just to try to keep it so I didn't have one small member here. I was looking for what are the solo big members that I had. So Shadowland, I just obviously just keep that team together. Now, one cho choice that I made is I chose to include Black Widow with Skilletary to make them more of an automatic win at 8.3. And then that really weakened my wave one. I noticed that my wave one was probably my poorest performer this time. How, what, what, are you, what did you guys discuss amongst yourselves? You know, who do you include in your skilletary team? 
I definitely went the route of putting Black Widow with them. Okay. I feel like they're much stronger with her. Almost all the time now. So I think that's definitely the right call. Yeah. Yeah, no question about that. I run full uh, Skeletary 2. And with her, because of the assist train that she she causes, that's it's really a, a benefit to the team. And that way you don't have to worry about them. Yeah, before this, before the Black Widow and the rework, this team was constantly losing. I actually had put uh, Silver Surfer with this team just so that they would win. Uh, and now they win. They're an auto win with Black Widow on the team. Uh, that's what I found. Now, this is a choice that I made with my uh, Supernatural because I have a small Elsa because I don't really use the Elsa in war. So I figured let's just throw Silver Surfer and have them be an auto win team. What do you guys think of that choice? Yeah. Yeah. Surfer's got the advantage of carrying anything. And sometimes it's good to take a carry where you're taking like four little guys. But not always, right? Because those higher power teams that may struggle, if you throw a carry in there, uh, now you're winning with more points and, and there's more benefit to, to to doing that sometimes rather than taking four little ones. I think it depends on the shape of your roster. Like, you know, if you built up the defenders back when they were great or the guardians or something, you have this massive team that you need carried a little bit, then I could see definitely wanting to put silver surfer with them or if you have a bunch of random characters that aren't good anymore that you built up back in the day like kingpin you know i i I haven't been playing as long so i don't have as much of that and for me i felt like i was getting more points out of this because he was carrying you know a 550k team So, so this is the Axemen team here, kept them together, kept X-Force. I find that X-Force is a middling performer for me. It can be kind of bad. You have to really pick and choose its counters. Do you have that experience, Duck? Yeah. It, the, so X-Force can be very unreliable, I guess is the best way to put it, because they just don't feel like they use they attack the targets properly like I, you don't want to pilot them like i think one of the biggest things that uh, missed numbers that we had from last time was you know we pilot everything we don't but when you some teams just perform better uh it's just a matter of picking the better matchup so x-force definitely does have the susceptibility even at you know like great strong teams that some of us have they just lose so you got to be really selective sometimes on what you pick with them yeah, I, I agree with that. X Force is definitely one of those teams where you want to be a little bit choosier with your matchups. Yeah, and sometimes that's the case for me with Marauders as well. Uh, Sel, have you had that experience where sub you have to really be thoughtful about who you're putting Marauders up against? Um, I mean, there's definitely some meta teams you want to avoid, but I think for the most part, I don't usually have too many. It's pretty rare I get a loss with Marauders. Interesting. Maybe it's because my my saber tooth is so small. I don't have enough damage on my team. Could be. All right. There's my brotherhoods, and I keep my inhumans attacked in, intact. I've been running, so I run just my usual uh, war sinister six lineup, and then I throw the other three sinister six on a team. My recollection is that you guys change up your lineups a little bit with the. Uh, with the Sinister Six, don't you have like Doc? I think you guys do something special with it. Uh, uh, Stuck, what do you guys do on yours, uh, on your uh, Sinister Six team? Yeah, we found that the chargeables with Doc Ock uh, was more than enough. I mean, and it really doesn't even matter what you take in as the other two. So what that advantage gives you is that you can break them out and either do the, you know, the original S6 or you can can slot in you know a vision with some of the x or s6 or you can just put them in a team as filler for damage because pretty much everybody else in the team like you know mysterio rhino shocker they're all good damage dealers so they can augment another team mm, yeah i i really like what stuff did where he put back the original s6 then after i played with her a bit i was losing all the time with them i was like eh, i'm just gonna go back to the uh, the one with Doc Ock. 
Yeah, I, I'll have to try that out. I, my, I, some of my other Sinister Six aren't quite as high. Um, so I'll have to, I will definitely have to try that out. That, that was a little bit too exotic for my taste. Um, I will say here with my Mercs, you know, this is a lineup that I, um, that I've done, that I've done. I have, I, you know, I, I basically just try to throw together whatever Mercs I have with Taskmaster. I do have a Merc Sniper also built and I just have him on a random team for now. I did consider replacing Black Widow with Killmonger uh, so that Killmonger would have a home there and then I could throw Merc Sniper here, but I ended up deciding against it. I thought it would be better to have Skeletary perform well. Yeah, I, I really like the Black Widow Skeletary. As far as the Mercs go though, I mean, Killmonger's fine, Sniper works. I choose to keep my Wakanda together so I have Sniper on the Mercs team. Wow, that's interesting. So you keep Wakanda together. Who's your biggest on the Wakanda team? Fury is, but I've recently built up the rest to like G12. So I feel like ever since I did that, the, the power level's a little more balanced. They've been winning more often. Hmm. Yeah, I was having a trouble. I still have my um, uh, uh, Okoye and M'Baku pretty low. So that really throws things off a little bit, I think, for my team. Um, all right, that's interesting. I do think this is a team you have to be careful with. Uh, you really want to make sure one issue for me is my Merc Lieutenant is kind of big, and he doesn't add tons to the team. So, you know, ideally this team would have a huge Taskmaster and the rest would be smaller because that's what generates the opposing team. Is that Does that make sense to you guys? Yep. Yeah, that's Taskmaster is your carry, so... Yeah, that's my thought. So here's what I did with Wave 1. This team has been very disappointing for me. I'm curious, Sal, you know, what have you done with Wave 1 uh, to try to get the best winning rate for them? After losing Black Widow, I have put Thor on the team. Mm. And I'm pretty sure that works better than it did before because I rarely lose with that team now. That's it. So what do you do with Asgardians? It's just... The four of them plus one extra, and they still win pretty much all the time, too. Wow. All right. I may try that out. I may try that out because this, this team was the, my, my biggest disappointment. I think I didn't have many losses in the last splits that I really tried on, but the, the, most of, most, the few that I had were with this team. Um, this one, Zemo plus any kind of Hydra group seems to do very well. Uh, yeah, what is your what is your experience uh, stuck? Yeah, Zemo's pretty reliable. Once I mean, so many people are th considering taking him into DD four, and that helped um, tremendously because he's a carry. And then if you're focusing on war with them, you also need to get your Hydra Grenader up in damage. So the two of them can just carry everything. Uh, I still have Kingpin in that group because it's it's perfect for it gives them uh boost that they need uh so they, they're a reliable win there's very few things that i find that they lose to mm -hmm. yeah i try to look for minions if i can to make it an easier win but yeah they seem to do really well so does uncanny i know you guys have done something unusual with your uncanny we can look at that on your own uh on your own squads i i don't uh i i kept it really simple now one thing i decided to do is with kestrel I don't have enough bad teams to or bad characters that are big enough to carry. And I thought, you know, why don't I just have an auto win team here with shield, having her with fury and the few shield minions. What do you guys think about this approach? I think that's what stuck runs with his shield is Kestrel. Yep. So shield performed. Okay. I mean, they're not, they're not the worst, but they were starting to drop off because it just, you know, the power creep from every other team. You slap her in there with Fury, and it's, it's, it went from, ah, I'm going to lose maybe to, yeah, I'm not losing. So it, it, she carries that team. And uh, also, you know, their power is relatively high if you have a bigger Fury too. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. She enhances Fury quite a bit. Uh, and then Fantastic Four seems to do very well for me with She-Hulk. I really don't have any problems winning with this team, even though they're a little lopsided with the huge Invisible Woman. I'm curious, uh, Sal, uh, what, it, what is your experience with that team? Um, yeah, they're still a great team. I still run Namor on the team because my 
She-Hulk isn't exactly that big yet. But ideally, She-Hulk is the preferred fifth for that team. Yeah, I think that she does well. Uh, now, Pym is a team that I feel like is more hit or miss for me. I try to be pretty careful about where I use them. I'm curious, Stock, what, what is your experience with Pym? Surprisingly well. Um, but, I, you know, I got really lucky. I got a six red star ghost. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, she can anybody fighting her in work and know that she can change the tide of a fight by herself. Um so it's but the rest of my guys are you know gear 12 uh level 70 no t4s on any of them outside of that um but they, they do decently well uh I, again this is that's one of the ones where you want to pick the fight where the evades will come in handy and usually that is when you're getting uh more less uh area effect damage and it's more focus damage from the enemy and then usually you're okay that makes sense so We've already talked a little bit about Asgardians. I still run the full team, but that may be a mistake. Maybe Hela can carry the rest with a, a fifth member. Uh, now, I'm running Tech Nerva because I wasn't getting great results with the OG Guardians. Uh, I'm curious, uh, Cell, what, what's your experience with the Guardians? I still run them with Vision and then... Um, Drax and Groot, Rocket Raccoon, and Star Lord, and they're not the best team, but they they generally give me a win if I'm picky with who I'm fighting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been reluctant to run the full team together. So what I do is you can see some of the members of the team. Although this will change now with Gamora, I've got Mantis and Gamora chilling here with Doom. He just he carries my misfit toys here. Uh, and, and this is something that I learned from you guys, the uh, Misfit Toys strategy, where you've got you know, a guy like Ultron or Doom just carrying a bunch of randos uh, right here. I, you know, I, do you guys do the same thing with Doom? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's on the carry team. <laughs> yeah, that, this is, these, are my, these are definitely my carries. I'll, I've got Ultron with AIM. Do you guys just uh, run straight AIM stuck? I still run straight aim. Um, they're they're a funny team because you would have thought they would have gotten power crept, and they did. I mean, but their strength, as long as the other opposing team doesn't have a purge, you usually are. And also, if, I mean, not anything huge in meta, you can usually win because um, it's just they're so suffocating with the debuffs that they can outlast. Yeah, it's it's surprising how good they do and blitz. I can't remember the, can't remember the last time I lost with them. Wow, what about power armor? Now that's that's a team I I joke a lot that you they don't have you know you know it's that old quote from uh, uh, Lord of the Rings. You have no power here. Uh, that's that's power armor at this point. Um, I I find them hit or miss. Uh, uh, what about uh, what about you, uh, uh, Sel? Do you have do you have luck with power armor? Um, you know, again, it depends on the matchups. Um, usually they'll win on Sim. Uh, you got to be careful. Like some of the teams are you still might want to, if you have the time, you might want to do a manual on them. But most of the time, Sim works successfully. And then I find this, this next team is very reliable. Red Skull and the Minions. I don't think the AI can ever figure out to target Red Skull first. And there's a taunt and bunch of other stuff going on. I feel like this team is pretty automatic. Uh, uh, you know, Sel, what, what's your, been your experience with them? With uh, Red Skull and the Minions? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that team wins all the time for me. I mean, I've had it lo lose before, but it's really, really rare. Yeah, same here. It's, it's almost never loses. It's, it's more automatic than some of my more meta saves, uh, ironically. Uh, and then the, the the seat does okay. Squirrel Girl and Friends. Uh, I just throw in uh, Spider Man because he's the hero brawler I have. That's the highest power. But this team seems to do surprisingly well for me as well, uh, even though they're not an important part of the meta. Stuck. Uh, what about you? If you how how has this team done for you? Yeah, Young Avengers benefit from focus fire. 
and dropping somebody fast and throwing in Spider-Man in there is a really good idea because you're tossing out defense down right on three targets and it's continuous. Like, you know, after his third turn, he'll do it again. Yeah, good sustain on that team. You can drop pretty much. I, you know, I really don't lose with them on auto. Yeah, I don't either. So it, it's a good solid team. Yeah, it's interesting how some of these teams do on blitz versus other game modes. Then I've got sort of my junk teams down here. I have to say these teams, I, 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 I kind of don't try to run much at eight point three unless I really get a great matchup. I just sort of once I hit eight point three, I just don't bother these with these in my other rotations. I'm curious, do you guys bother with teams like this when you're, you know, doing a new character blitz uh, cell? I can't actually see what team you're referring to. Oh, I've got the, um, like the Cree minions and hand and teams like that, or just my assorted spare parts. So uh, I throw carries on those teams. So like for hand, I have uh, like doom or something on that team. Silver's, Silver Surfer. And for Cree, I just moved Kestrel to that team. Wow. All right. This is why these guys are the Bliss Masters. Let's take a look at their teams. They're they're way better than mine. Okay. Now you're you are you are going to see here why I'm not a Blitz Master. So I'm going to show up at the screen here. And I'm actually, let's see, I am taking a look now. I think this is it's let's see, it's a six ninety six um k okay, uh, team so this one is um um this one is uh this one sells so 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 i'm looking here at your teams and i notice so you you do a kind of a an ultimus cree team how does that team perform for you in blitz oh, that team works really well actually Interesting. Uh, especially yeah if you see like a team with like juggernaut or a bunch of tanks on it it'll demolish them Ah, that makes sense because the ultimate destroying the taunted characters. That makes a lot of sense. I yeah. see this is your, you got that seven red star rocket. That's probably why that team performs so well for you. Yeah, that's that's probably a contributing factor to why it does decent. <laughs> I'd say so. It's, it's a beefy rocket. Uh, my, uh, my four star, or four red star uh, G12 rocket doesn't last uh, quite so long. There you've got the Sinister Six together, X-Force. You guys can see he runs Skilletary with Black Widow. The Merc team, like we've discussed. Now, you threw Yondo, Yondu in with the Asgardians. That's a that's a bold choice. Yeah, he was my, my big leftover, and the, the team just needed a leftover character, so I just slotted him in, and they win. Hey, if it, if they can carry on to two win, that's great. Just shows you this team. You know they they they've been power crap, but they're still very good on uh. And if both sides are on auto, Red Skull. We've talked about Axe Men uh, now. So you guys do this thing where you take Beast, put him on Uncanny, and then take Phoenix and throw her elsewhere as a carry. I find that very innovative. So can you explain that one to us, Sal? Yeah, one Sal is X Men and. Uh, uh, Axeman came out. I realized that, hey, we have this extra, this extra Axeman, and I figured that Phoenix could carry an entire team by herself. So putting those other two teams together, as you see, these Phoenix to carry a whole team by herself. By herself. Very interesting. Very interesting. And then, okay, we have, this is, we've got the, we talked about the, the Fantastic Four, Zemo. Let's go back uh, up here to the top. So we've got Inhumans. You guys, you also put Spider-Man with your Young Avengers. Makes sense. We've got the Brotherhood. Now you run straight shield. So how does this shield Coulson do for you? So. Oh, sorry. I accidentally muted myself. Um, they're not the best blitz team, but if you're picky with your matchups, they'll they'll win most of the time. Yeah. Now I see here what you did. You got Phoenix with a bunch of riffraff, and she yeah, carries them, right? Yeah, that's my leftover Sinister Six and my a weak She Hulk. Yeah, gets it done. We got the power armor here. 
Now, with that, now this is interesting. With your wave one, you said you have Thor, which boosts the team, but you have Shield Trooper in here. What's the thought process there? I just needed a plus one, and he was a leftover Shield character, so I just tossed him on. Yeah, I think he's, you know, he's a reasonable choice there. Uh, S Supernatural, how do they perform just on their own with Elsa as the fifth? Um, they generally don't have any problems with them. They win almost all the time. Wow. Interesting. And he's got Kree with Kestrel and then a bunch of Riff Raff with Doom. So Kree with Kestrel, that's probably an auto win, right? Especially since Kestrel's I, the biggest one. I actually haven't had a chance to test it, but I'm going to assume that they're an auto win. <laughs> I just made that switch after unlocking Misty, so... Interesting. That's an interesting one. What about so Wakanda here? I see you've got a G14 Shuri and then these G12 characters, and they, they do pretty well, huh? I mean, like I said, they're not the best Blitz team, but uh, after I got all of them to like G12, it, it definitely helped that team a lot, balancing out those power levels. Very interesting. Well, this is you see how these guys are eking out? Out of these rosters, they're eking out value. Look at this hand with Silver Surfer. This is an auto win team. Why? Because your opponent's going to have one character that's 100 plus K and then four smaller characters. So as long as that character is a weaker character than Silver Surfer, which is likely, uh, you're going to probably win that matchup. Very, very smart team here. Then we've got, okay, so you got uh, X Factor with Hand Sentry. Yeah, that works. Uh, key, hide, hide the uh, dad bros, right? Pretty much any fifth with X Factor wins. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And then your fifth with the uh, young, with the uh, Heroes for Hires, Jessica Jones. That makes sense given the synergy. Uh, that's where she performs best, I would imagine. Yeah, I'm hoping that team does well. I haven't had a chance to really test them out in Blitz yet, but. Mine does Should fine. Now I've got them at G15 and a lot of the T, all the kind of necessary T4s, but they do very well with Shuri as the fifth, like auto win. And they're, they're a huge team for me. They're 650 K or something. So um, they, they perform well. Um, we PIM, we've talked about already. And then, uh, okay, this is a team for something else. So let's take a look now at Stuck's teams. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go back a second. What? The team at the end is actually a blitz team. What? <laughs> it's all my carries grouped together and i use that to burn blitz charges because it's one of the biggest teams i have oh that's interesting so you don't if you don't have many blitz charges you throw your best characters together and use them there it's one of my top four teams so i'm usually going to burn through the 25s on my top four teams so that team will be generating higher point value teams than like my shadowland team very interesting stuff. You see that? Now, that is really innovative stuff. I, I thought you just left it out by mistake. That's some innovative stuff there, guys. I didn't think of that. So my do Doom never see uses any charges. I never put charges on my Doom or my Kestrel because they're uh, carrying the Lobies. Very smart. If you've got, if they're some of your largest characters, use them. Get, that's really, really smart. Wow. Okay, that's why they call the, these guys the Blitzmasters. Let, let's go to Stuck. Now, Stuck, I want to take a look at your teams here. Obviously, so a lot of these are going to be very similar here. We got, you know, the, the Symbiotes, the, the, you know, Black Order, Fantastic Four, Power Armor. I notice you've got Phoenix here carrying this group of, of losers. Uh, and you, But you included Hulk on this team. Why not put Hulk with Wave 1? Oh, my Hulk disappoints me. Um, you can <laughs> see he's so tiny. Um, and I, I, those three red stars are going to plague me forever because my wave one is not terrible. Um, so he, he, he fits there well because Phoenix uh, in, in her own team with small guys is, is okay. Um, actually, it's more than okay, right? It's like 90% win rate. But he helps keep that a little higher. Um, so... It, and plus, he fits in there as a point uh, pinata. So, yep, that makes a lot of sense. Now, here I see um, what you did is you took Colson and Shield Medic and put them on your wave one along with Thor. Very interesting choice there. Can you explain that one to us? Yeah, so my old team used to be Black Widow was in that team, and she she needed to go. She needed to go to her team. So. 
Thor made sense. And and Sel and I talk about our you know our blitz teams all the time because we're really just we're trying to maximize go as wide as possible. And he came up with the idea, and I'm like, you know that that's you're right. The Asgardians can carry themselves without Thor. It's it's weird to say that because you just assume Thor is gonna gotta be there, and he doesn't have to be there. Um, so that team works really well, um, and and allows it for allowed Black Widow to step out of the team. Yeah, that's interesting. And I guess Shield Medic has that synergy with Coulson, so there's there's yes. some value there. Now I see here with X Factor, you only you have a 27k aim infector. Why not put a bigger character for them to carry? So they're they can do whatever they need to do. <laughs> it's just the four of them. So I took one of my largest little guys and threw him in there because um, while I mean you could definitely put like a Namor or anything in there. That's that's okay. But I found that he could be utilized better in another position and that they just handle whatever they need to handle. Just fine. Interesting. Yeah. I always am thinking, okay, I want my big teams to carry my, uh, another big character is the way I'm thinking about it. But I see your, I mean, I see your point. Look, obviously it's, it's worked very well for you. We've already talked about what you guys do with uncanny. Now you have gone a different route than sell with your guardians. I notice you not only have vision, you have silver surfer on the guardians. What's the thought process there? So I was tired of playing them manually. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I don't want to like the, the goal is always not to pilot, right? You pilot when you're going to get the win because you, you don't want to lose, but you also don't want to pilot. Um, but he's got great synergy with that team, right? Cause they're cosmic heroes. Um, they're going to benefit from him. Plus it, it essentially, if you go in and play the team, they wipe everything out in the first round or two. So there's really nothing stopping them. Plus silver surfer can carry, or he can be on this team. So I took a team that performed moderately well, and now they always win. And that was the thought process behind it. That's what I did with Supernatural. Very similar choice, right? Drop the worst member, throw in Silver Surfer, and they're an auto-win team. Um, I think that that makes a lot of sense for Guardians. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing here, I'm looking in kind of at the different shapes of your teams. These are all meta teams here. You do use Kestrel with with Shield. Seems like a similar thought process to that, that I've used uh, in terms of just making that a, a stronger, more reliable team. Yeah, you, it, it's one of those teams where I, I had to play them sometimes. And they weren't terrible when you played them, but nobody wants to play the teams, right? That's why we got Blitz Sim. So you, you want to reserve that for as few teams as, as possible. Well, she solved that problem. I don't have to play that team, or I, I don't have to manually do that team anymore at all. And then... Um... And then let's see here. So then we've got, I notice here what you did is you took one of the Sinister Six members off, threw in Ravager Boomer. Congrats on the seven Red Star Boomer. Uh, <laughs> uh, or uh, not so congrats. Uh, and then you got some Sinister Six over here. What's your thought process there? Yeah, that, that boomer. Um, it, funny enough, when I pulled that boomer, uh, Cell laughed at me quite a bit. And then he pulled one. So, <laughs> um, but that, that team is, that team is kind of those three, right? It's the chargeable characters. They can carry anyone. Um, Drax gives a little bit of what Rhino put in and then it really doesn't matter who the, the fifth is. Uh, technically I would say it doesn't even matter who the fourth is. Yeah. That's really interesting. That's an interesting approach there. Your fifth for heroes for hire is JJ as well. Um, and I just don't have her belt. Mine's level one. Uh, you've got Doom with the hand, very similar strategy, but you're running the Kree minions with Ronin on their own. How's that team doing? Um, so that is a manual, and <laughs> it's funny you say that because I find myself checking the Kree team's matchups 20 times a cycle because um, you, you just you got to get a team that they can beat, and – you need to understand what that team strength is. Like uh, it, it can purge right away, right? And it can focus down and sust, uh, sustain, but you can't go against any meta that's out there. So it's, it's a lot of the older characters. That is a target team for me to figure out how to make uh, far more sim, 
right? I don't want to play them. So I gotta I gotta work on those guys. And that's why I stuck Kestrel on that team. <laughs> well, it makes sense. And really, the, what I want the reason that I think it's helpful for people to see these three different approaches to this is you could see depending on where your roster is at. For me, my Cree are like a hundred k. So trying to make that team like successful doesn't really net me a lot of points. I'm better off making sure my 400k teams win 100% of the time instead of 80. Whereas, you know, if you got a 265k team taking the the lowest member off and putting on a carry, I think it makes a lot more sense. You're getting more points out of that. I would agree with that, and I think that should be the strategy that everybody goes for. Um I mean it, this is 33 teams because 33 teams leaves three on the bench, three players on the bench. So we don't even have enough for 34 yet, but that doesn't mean you have to have 33, right? You can, you can do the exact strategy you talked about to make your life easier. I'm just used to it, I guess. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I've, I, I played manual way, you know, for years, you know, I've always been a bit blitz player, so it's a little bit more comfortable for me. But I recognize that it's not the same for everybody else, and it shouldn't be. Uh, we should all be maximizing our rosters at the same time, making it easier for us and getting as many points as possible. Yeah, look, I I, I think that's right. There's different approaches here. I, I really want to never play manually, so I'm trying to make my teams – you know, 90% plus win rate on auto. It's just, or on sim, that's, it's just a different approach to it. But look, what I hope you guys get out of this conversation is different ways of approaching the problem, showing how to use the new meta characters, showing how as the meta's changed in Blitz, how you should change your teams around. This is about as in-depth as it gets for Blitz analysis with the Blitz Masters. Thank you guys for joining us. It's always a pleasure. I've learned from you. Everyone else is as well. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us, Phil. All right, guys. If you like this video, smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, and go to our Discord. The Blitzmasters are on the Discord, and they post their teams. They keep it updated regularly. You can find the original Blitzmasters guide linked below. Also, their original video where they explain their method. A little bit unusual, different than what you might have learned before. Uh, and that video is also linked on our Discord as well.